Hello everyone, and welcome to the Nerd Scrolls. Today, I'd like to start the first episode of my new series, Table Talk, where every Friday I discuss topics that you guys leave in the comments about anything related to tabletop or a topic of my choice. Today, for the first episode, I wanted to talk about the origins of my tabletop gaming experiences. Basically, where I got my interests from. So, let's begin. To be honest, it all really started when I was watching a channel called Node, quite popular. Um, it is the gaming channel of Corridor Digital. And they all of a sudden started a Dungeon Dragons 5th edition campaign. Now, back then, I'd heard of Dungeon Dragons, obviously, quite a few people have, you know. It was very popular, but I never knew anything about it extensively. So all I knew, all I knew about it was the name. So I was interested, and being a massive fan of RPGs at the time, playing stuff like Skyrim and Dragon's Dogma, I thought, I'll give it a watch, I'll see if I like it, and then I might watch some more stuff about it. So, by the time I actually noticed their videos, there was, I think they were on episode 5. So I went back and looked at episode 1 and watched all the way through, and I really started enjoying it. I liked the use of miniatures and the stories and, and the freedom that wasn't restricted by game system rules. So you weren't restricted to where you could go or anything like that. You could go where your imagination took you. And that's what really kind of caught my attention. So on their storyline, they played a group of barbarians that their camp was attacked by a group of guards. And a few of the characters' families were killed. And they went on kind of like a merc, like kind of a, um, what would you call it, like a a revenge hunt and a rescue party kind of as one of the characters families was taken so his son and his wife and it was a very interesting story they went through a village to a castle kind of more like a cathedral kind of thing but it was very interesting and it really got my attention so kind of a few more weeks pass and I continue watching and I get really hooked and I start searching up other things but then I kind of I don't really get hooked onto it. At that time, I couldn't really latch on to just spoken words. I was too used to watching miniatures, which I grew out of, obviously, as I all of my campaigns I do at the moment are just from imagination, as I don't have the right miniatures to do a full kind of miniature table. But I wasn't interested in watching just spoken words. So I just kind of forgot about it for a while until I went into a shop called Eclectic Games, and this is at the time when I was addicted to Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and I was going in there kind of buying booster packs and all that, until I noticed on their website they had an open board games evening. And at that point, I thought Dungeon Dragons was a board game, before I realised it was an actual kind of book series thing. So I thought, well this is a great time to play Dungeon Dragons, I'll get three of my friends who enjoy RPGs and, and Lord of the Rings and that kind of thing and then we'll go play it. So this was actually before I made Kingslayer, so this was the Friday after I actually made Kingslayer, so it was kind of like a week of really productive filmmaking, a good film, and then kind of a, a good experience of D&D. So all of us get in the shops, we're, we're new there, we're nervous, all of these like regular people are walking about and we're all really nervous, and then I say, well, we're here for the board games evening, we pay, and we look at the collection, and I see the Dungeon Dragons board game series, which has Castle of Ravenloft, and what was the other one? Um, oh, it's like Lair of Ashradalen or something, it was the one with the Red Dragon. But we started with Castle Ravenloft, and at that point, knew nothing about it. So we take it upstairs, and another one of my friends joins in later, and we start playing it. It takes me a while to get hand kind of like get used to the rules as I wasn't an excessive kind of board games player so some people would have like instinctively kind of got the rules straight away but me I was kind of clueless but eventually I got it and it was quite fun so characters moving about and kind of like back then I wouldn't go into extensive detail of each move so back then I'd just say yep you hit him okay roll yeah that's a good roll yep okay you hit him but now when we play it I'm very extensive like um, okay, if you want to attack the goblin, you swing your sword and it slices straight down the middle of the goblin. And I kind of, I'm, I'm 
too used to doing that now, even when we play the board game, it's just full, full narration. So we play that, and then we have a really fun evening. And at that time, I used to kind of make up a thing called Facebook D&D, which I used to play with a few friends over Messenger, where I'd just do everything by the roll of a six-sided dice, like in the actual uh, board game, except instead of a D20, it's a D6. And I just kind of practiced narrating these big stories, and it used to go on for ages. I remember the night I got back from the board games evening, I was literally up till two o'clock in the morning doing Facebook D&D with my friends, as I was literally just, they were going into a, a, um, a, part, of a, a um, part of a region where it was just infected with Skaven from Warhammer. And they were literally going in and, and sneaking about with this dwarf and killing loads of Skaven. And it was literally, I was, getting, I was so hyped about all of this role playing and immersive, immersive content, it was just amazing. So, after that, we keep going every week. This was before the actual shop did a board games evening every day. It was just on Mondays and Fridays. So, Monday Night Gaming, Friday Night Gaming. So, Friday Night Gaming was our thing. It was fun. At that point, at school, people didn't understand the fun of Dungeons & Dragons. They still don't. Quite a few people at school think it's stupid. But, I say to those people, you know, you stare at a screen, pixels all day, you lose your imagination. This this requires an extensive amount of imagination, and I'm glad I got one. No offense. But we keep doing that every week for quite a while. This was during our summer holidays. We did it every week of the summer holiday, and we were loving it. Until halfway through, I get my Warhammer first edition. I think I have it around here. Give me two seconds. Yep, here it is. I get the original fantasy, Warhammer fantasy roleplay. I loved this book. The extensive artwork and everything like that, I loved it. My dad bought this for me, as this is what my dad used to play when he was younger. And I just spent ages reading and reading all of the rules and kind of memorising it. I still didn't memorise how to make the characters up by out, but I can kind of do that with Dungeons & Dragons. Anyway, so I brought that along to one of our gaming evenings one day and everyone gave us some funny looks as they were all getting their board games out and stuff and I was just there handing out sheets, rolling dice, that kind of thing, but I think people knew what it was. Like they, obviously they know what it was, but they kind of understood what we were getting into and I think they were happy with that. We got known as the Warhammer guys um, after a few weeks of playing and that really kind of like launched my friends into it as quite a few people really enjoyed it. So we did that till the end of the summer holiday kind of switching between D&D &D and, and some other board games and stuff like that. But we were happy. And then we kept going on, kept playing, kept playing. Until one evening, as we head up as we head downstairs, I look to my left and I see a shelf that has all of these books lined up and I just see big bold letters. Dungeon Dragons, and I look over, and I actually, before I grab the place handbook, I grab the first thing I always wanted to see, the Monster Manual. Oh, I love this book. I could spend hours upon hours just reading through the book. I was just literally, just, just, this was me. Oh, cool. Ah, oh, so cool. That, that was basically me on my first, first viewing of the magnificent book that is the Monster Manual. And it's just the cover art, just, just the beholder, just, just, ah, oh, just, just, ah. Oh. Having a nerdgasm. But reading through this just got me hooked. And then it got closer to my birthday, and I thought, I need, I need to have these. So I asked for the player's handbook and the monster manual, as the, I think the Dungeon Master's Guide was just said, get that after you've got the necessary ones. Even the monster manual is not necessary, you just really need the player's handbook to get started. So I asked for these for my birthday and I got them and let's just say I, we didn't end up playing it for a while because as I said in my, I think I said this in my starter set review, I didn't, I played the D&D starter set which my iPad is resting on so I can't grab that, I actually played the starter set before this. And we didn't really get it. I guess it kind of put us off a bit more as we got confused by it. But I got these 
and at first I was clueless. I just couldn't get my head around the rules. But then more and more reading came week after week of we're not actually playing it. I think we still stuck with Warhammer until I actually learned the rules and I said, let's do an evening of it. We do it, it's fun. And then to that to this day, every week on a Friday, I've had sessions upon sessions of D D. And I guess that's really where it all started. It literally started from the viewing of one YouTube video, to the playing of a board game that I thought was the actual Dungeon Dragons, to buying the start set, to buying the manuals. And let's just say I'm really glad I found my love for Dungeon Dragons, as it's kind of, in a weird way, made my who I am today, as I wouldn't have such a passion for something, as everyone has a passion for, some, for something. Someone has a passion for FIFA, Someone has a passion for Call of Duty, Halo. Some people have a, like, they absolutely love doing LARP. And some people just love sleeping. We all have a passion for something. And before D&D, I didn't have a major passion for anything, really, than just playing games. But I wanted to find something more singular to latch onto, a series. And I guess, I guess D&D was the thing. And boy, I'm glad it was. I could literally ramble on for hours wondering why I love D&D. But, that's all I'm going to do for this episode. Thank you all for watching. If you like this story, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more nerdy, nerdy content. I'm still getting better at the outro. I will do a part two to this, where I start explaining what happened on my first sessions of the fifth edition of D&D. That will kind of be the part two of the origin story. But that was just my origin of tabletop and getting into D&D. So, if you like this series, subscribe, leave a like, comment, and also comment if you have any topics you want me to cover further in our table talks every Friday. A best reference for this is if you go over to Dawn Forgecast channel. Uh, also, another thank you for him for shouting me out ages ago on my birthday, actually. Um, head over to his channel where he has an Ask a DM series that he streams on Twitch and people leave questions for him just to do with anything so um, how do I roleplay this, how do I treat players like this, what arms of the players being difficult just kind of ask me questions like that and I'll make like a list of them and I'll go through them one by one in a video so I may go through four topics on a video, six topics depending how long they are but I kind of want to do this as like a regular series you can look forward to on the channel as I don't have anything focused, I don't know where the channel is focused on but I want to make it focused on D&D &D. and also expect D&D &D channel, like D&D &D, uh, run throughs, playthroughs, campaigns, that kind of thing later on and once again I will see all of you in the next video farewell